here for today's seminar. Dr. Saro. Dear student, we have a very special guest today with us. Before we begin, let me introduce today's speaker, Ms. Kobe, to you all. Educated and trained in Silicon Valley, Ms. Kobe lived in Northern California for 20 years. After completing her Bachelor of Science from California State University and MBA from Santa Clara University, she worked in the Valley for Fortune 100 companies startups and in the financial industry. Our expertise include strategic planning and growth, sales execution, financial management, team building, and change management. Ms. Kobe is currently the managing director for Microsoft Bangladesh, founder president of Tai Dhaka, vice president and co-founder of Bangladesh Women in Technology board member of the American International School, Dhaka, and Bangladesh on seven summits. She has served in the board of Bangladesh Employers Federation, Bangladesh Cricket Board, Women's Wing, Aboni Women's Game Development Committee, and Women Entrepreneurs Association. Ms. Kobe is also closely associated with IUB. She's the member of the Business Advisory Board of the School of Business IUB. Recently, Ms. Kobe has been appointed by the United Nations Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, to serve in the governing council of the Technology Bank for the least developed countries as a representative of Bangladesh. She has won the highly prestigious Founders Award given by Bill Gates. Founders Award is given for superior leadership, innovation, and significant contribution to the business with outstanding impact. Besides co-founding an IT firm, Syntech, Ms. Kobe has served as the country director of Dell Bangladesh, director of business development for Southeast Asia, new emerging markets in Microsoft, and chief operating officer for Amra Technologies Limited. Ms. Sonia is a national athlete. She has played for Bangladesh national volleyball team and Bangladesh national cricket team. She is not only an inspiration, but also a pride of the nation. Dear students, colleagues, and guests, I'm delighted to have Ms. Sonia Boshin Kovit today as a speaker and looking forward to her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sauer. It is my immense pleasure to invite the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor M. Omar Rahman, to share his thoughts and insights about today's topic of the seminar. Professor M. Omar Rahman. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and dear students. This is really a pleasure for me to be here today uh, at a talk where. Uh, Ms. Sonia Bashir Kabir, Managing Director, Microsoft Bangladesh, is the featured speaker. I have, in the truth in advertising, I've known uh, Sonia for many, many years. Uh, her husband and I were in school together, and uh, her parents were our, my parents' tenants for many years. But I have to say that you, uh, you know, I learned something that I didn't know. I didn't know you were a national athlete in volleyball and cricket. So it just goes to show that even people you know very well, you don't know everything about them. And so it's obviously a pleasure, and, and you know, she has an absolute. Uh, brilliant resume as it's been uh, you know, laid out by uh, Dr. Sarwar. And uh, someone who's had, you know, in, in many ways I think is an icon for our students in IUB because she's done so many different things. She's not a unidimensional person. She has excelled in many, many areas and across a wide range of uh, interests from sports to technology to business uh, and to you know, sort of civil society. 
society and so on. And this is in some ways, I think particularly for our female students, I think an important thing to focus on, uh, that she has never let her gender come into the way of her aspirations. And I think this is an amazing thing given that it is very, very difficult for women anywhere in the world, and particularly in Bangladesh, to uh, get to the highest levels of uh, uh, in, in either the corporate world or the political world or whatever. Bangladesh, of course, is a very special place because it is uh, one of the countries where, uh, at least in terms of political power, women have dominated for the last two decades and we are better off for it. Uh, and I think that same success in the political world has not completely translated as of yet to the corporate world and to the professional world. And I think it is important for our students, both male and female, and, and I think it's important that we see it in gender neutral way, that to, that to get to the highest levels of achievement, and as I'm sure that, as uh, Ms. Kabir will tell us herself, has taken a lot of hard work and a lot of great determination and of course it helps that she's very talented, but I think that by itself uh, did not get her where she was. Today's topic, I think, is particularly germane, technology and the new frontier, because, uh, you know, technology is all around us. I, you know, I was uh, talking to my 16-year-old who told me that she couldn't imagine a world without uh, the internet. And I said, well, you know, I was there in California when the, actually the first uh, web browser was, uh, was launched. Netscape, this is probably before many of you in this room are. <laughs> and I remember I was at a place called RAND, which was one of the places where the original research on um, the internet was done. And we spent a huge amount of time doing something called FTP, or one photograph from one room to another, because it was so amazing that you could actually send things. Of course, now, as my daughter says, she can't imagine a world without the internet, and everything she does is she's wired all the time. Uh, and she Googles everything, and, and everything is at your fingertips. And now, Microsoft, of course, is an iconic company. I think if, 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 if there are very few companies which are associated by name, you know, sort of like Xerox has become a part, it's become a part of the English language. Uh, instead of photocopying, we say Xeroxing. And Microsoft is very similar to that. And I have to admit that I've had a very interesting history with Microsoft. Bill Gates uh, was two years ahead of me at Harvard College. Uh, and I did know various people who knew him, but I never bought stock in Microsoft, much to my great regret. Uh, my daughter once told me that, why is it important to go to college? I said, of course, you need to get a good education. And she says, well, you know, all of these important people have dropped out of college. And I said, who? And she said, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. And I said, well, when you're at that level, then you too can drop out. But, you know, obviously Microsoft is an iconic company in and it is at the heart of the uh, IT. Uh, in fact, perhaps it, along with IBM are the two sort of what we call the, the basic pillars of IT. Um, and I'm really happy that it is now uh, the CEO of Microsoft is Satya Nadella, who's an Indian American, and uh, you know it is a, a it is a company which has it's worldwide, and it shows in its uh, in terms of its sort of uh, uh, people who they've chosen to lead it as they've chosen Sonia Bashir to be to lead it in Bangladesh, that they're looking at a wide range of representation across gender and across culture and so on. Um, technology is definitely, undoubtedly, the new frontier, not only for the world, but for Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh has done incredibly well in many areas, and uh, you know, in the eyes of many people, it's seen as sort of the, the icon of the garment industry. But we need to do more than just garments. Uh, not that uh, in any way diminishes the influence of what garments has brought Bangladesh to the world stage, and we are the second largest exporter of garments in the world. But we need to, you know, I think mirror that success in IT. And there is a good model, I mean, in, in uh, India alone, which I think is the largest source of outsourcing of IT uh, uh, work, and they've built up that industry from scratch. It's, I believe, uh, you know, many billion dollar industry now. And but it did start off with people very much like Sonia Kabir, who came back from Silicon Valley, saw an opportunity, was able to capitalize on it, and made this into what it is. So we are uh, very pleased and eager to hear what Ms. Kabir has to say about uh, our own experiences uh, as an individual, 
you know, succeeding in a man's world, but also about the possibilities of IT in Bangladesh, because uh, this is the future. So thank you again for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come and speak with us. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Dean of the School of Business, Dr. Saruddin and his team for <coughs> arranging uh, these series of seminars. Uh, a lot, perhaps the, the major credit goes to our Board of Trustees and to our Chairman, Mr. Rashid Chaudhary, who has really pushed uh, this idea that we need to bring in change makers in Bangladesh to come and talk to our students and he has pushed us and, and a very appropriate time and we have we, we started this program where we are hoping to bring, we've started already with some of the top uh, corporate and entrepreneurs uh, and we hope to continue to bring to the IUB family, including the students, particularly the students, people who have made a difference. So, uh, once again, thank you, Sonia, for coming. You have definitely made a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rahman. It is indeed an honor to invite the Honorable Chairman, Board of Trustees, Mr. Rashid Chaudhary, to share his views on today's discussion. Thank you. It's a full crowd. It's all here to listen to you. So, Salaam Alaikum and a very good afternoon. I think it was um, Shakespeare who said, uneasy lies ahead, there wears a crown. And looking at Sonia's um, credential, tremendous, it's a crown. I hope your head is not uneasy. <laughs> so, um, thank you very much, Sonia, for coming, um, giving me your promise, for giving you valuable time to speak to our students. The whole purpose of having this kind of, as our Vice Chancellor has mentioned, that this kind of iconic figures, the change makers, we have started this um, system so that we have had in the past uh, Abrar Anwar, the managing director of Standard Chartered Bank. We have had Nasim Manzoor, the uh, managing director of Apex Group, and also the presently the president of the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. We had uh, Anisa Khan, managing director of Mutual Trust Bank, and lastly we had Salman Spahani, the managing director of Spahani Group. They're all change makers. Now we have. Uh, Sonia Bashir, and we are going to get some more. All this is for the benefit of our students, so that you can, li listening to all, the, I've been to all of these, and listening to them, I have learned, but it's too late at my age to learn and do something about it. But you're all young, please listen carefully to what they have to say, what Sonia has to say, or the future speakers will bring some more for you, will say, and do ask questions, which I have mentioned last time as well. Do ask questions, enrich yourself, learn. I've, I've gone wiser after listening to them. She's going to speak about uh, Bill Gates' uh, Microsoft. As our vice chancellor said, he was a dropout. So was uh, Steve Jobs of Apple, a dropout. Mark Zuckerberg. Is that what you said? A dropout. But don't get the message wrong. <laughs> Being a dropout does not make you a brilliant. They come, you know, once in 100 million, maybe. These are the unique ones. Uh, you, there have been a lot of successful people by going through the formal structure education as well. And um, with regard to um, <clears throat> Our creator of um, Microsoft, Bill Gates, <laughs> dropout, created this, changed the world, made billions of dollars, became the richest man in the world, probably still is, and then he decided to quit, and he started the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation with his wife. And I read somewhere and I heard him speak in the television saying that he is, he plans to give all his money to charity by the time he dies. Now that is great. Now that is a good message. Not the dropout bit, but this one. When you make money also, inshallah, give it to charity to people who need help. And I would like to look forward, all of us, to listen to Sonia. 
And I would also echo what the Vice Chancellor said to the School of Business. Thank you very much for making all these arrangements, for enriching our students, and a special thanks to Samina. She's disappeared, oh, that she is, for bringing um, all these academic speakers, and you have to carry on doing that. You're a friend of um, Sonia, you have a lot of other friends, bring them along. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Chaudhary. Um, I take pleasure in sending a warm invite to our guest today, Ms. Sonia Bashir, Kabir, Managing Director of Microsoft Bangladesh, for coming on the stage and sharing her immense knowledge and wisdom with our guests and students. Ms. Kabir. Honorable Chairman, Board of Trustees, Members of the board, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dean of the School of Business, and the wonderful students, a very, very good afternoon to all of you. It is indeed an honor for me to be here today, and I'm envious of you because you have something I don't have, which the chairman mentioned. You have age on your side, which I don't. So, what I'm going to talk about is going to hopefully inspire you to the fields that I'm working in. But I wanted to begin by asking you a very um, small question, and I'll do the answering. But imagine uh, BPL is happening right now. Everybody knows the rules of the game, how you play cricket. People know how you bat, how you bowl, the boundary rules. People know soccer, those of you who like to watch the rules of the game. But imagine if the rules of the game changed daily. Would Shakib al Hassan be able to bat with his head or bowl with his legs? So that is what is happening in the world today. The rules of the way of doing business are changing daily. And do you know what is bringing that change? It's technology. Technology is challenging every vertical of business. Technology is an enabler. Technology cuts through all verticals of business, agriculture, education, fintech, another aspect, health. Every field that you watch today is being touched by technology. Even 10 years ago, three of the largest companies of the world, based on market capitalization, were Exxon, Shell, manufacturing-based companies. Do you know the three of the largest companies of the world today, based on market capitalization, are Apple, Google, and Microsoft? Which tells you that what is happening right now is the company I work for, we have been given a message to empower every individual and every organization on the planet to do more. Which means B2B, those of you who know, business to business, B2C, business to consumer. Touch every life. See how you can make lives better. Before I really want to give my message to you, there's um, something that's very interesting. So if you, were, if you spell the word woman, man is in it. If you spell the word female, male is in it. If you spell the word she, he is in it. So it's very interesting, right? That, so what I'm trying to say is that when I grew up, the first thing that I learned was there's no difference between man and woman. We're really one. When you compete, you don't think about that, whether you're a woman or a man. Um, when you do anything in life, you don't compete. An interesting story from my childhood, I grew up with two brothers. I never had a doll in my life because I was always worried my brothers are going to make fun of me, that I play with dolls. And they would play soccer and they would never let me play and I would say, I want to play as well. And they said, no, you can be the goalkeeper and they would kick really hard and see if I'm good at that. And it was, it was a bit of a um, you know, challenge that I wanted to take and saying, I want to see how it feels. So you know how I started playing volleyball and how I started playing cricket? Because my brother said, for, if you want to play well, you have to play in a badminton court with a football, play volleyball, and you face the side of the sun. So I had two brothers on one side of the court. I was facing the side of the sun with a volleyball in my hand in a badminton court, with a, sorry, football in my hand. So it was one of the things that I learned in my childhood because I never thought there's a difference between man and woman, was that take the challenge. And there are five C's that I thought are important in my life, I'll share with you before we move into the crux of the matter today, which is technology. Um, so the five C's that I have worked on myself, I teach my children and my colleagues, and if I get a chance to talk to students, are the first C for me is very important, 
is curiosity. So it's very, very important to inculcate a sense of curiosity because that enables you to think about what is happening. The world is actually changing very fast. If you look at the mobile phone and things that we do, you will see how technology is touching our lives, but it was a curious mind that decided to change. The second C that is very important, and that will lead me to a bit more of the discussion on why technology is the new frontier, is courage. The best definition I read of courage was it is the ability to face fear in the eye and say, get out of my way, I've got things to do. This message is more powerful for women than men, because I think that we compete in a world where there is no difference. And then to challenge and change, because if you have the curious mind and you have the courage, you will challenge and change. And the last C that our uh, chairman did mention was about giving to charity is compassion. Whatever you do in your life, I think the fifth C, you have to have an element of compassion. How does technology come into all of this and why is it called the new frontier? If you look at the 1760s, the first industrial revolution, we had horses, right? If you look back and you see what was horses and carriages, though that was the mode of transportation and people were employing that to carry goods and do business. Then the second industrial revolution was when trains came and they went far faster than the horses. And that brought about this, the, and the railway and things changed and modes of business changed. That's also a little bit of technology. The third industrial revolution was the computers, the era in the 80s where you, everybody had a laptop or a desktop to work. Right now, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. It is not just computers. It is the ability to touch what technology does to change in your new life. Um, so where are we now as a company? I will talk to you a little bit about Microsoft and then tell you where the world is heading. How many of you have heard about cloud computing? So, you know, if I was to explain cloud computing, it's in a very easy way. It's about those people who have email. If you have Gmail, if you have Hotmail, hopefully some of you do, or if you have Yahoo Mail, you can access that from any place, anywhere, anytime, right? You don't need your own device to access your email. Facebook, you don't need your own device to access that. You can get on any device which has connectivity. So where is all of this hosted for you to be able to get onto it? That is the concept of cloud, right? That is parked somewhere. All you need is a device to get in and, and, and access. That is what is happening in the world. So if you begin by looking at your experiences, your students now, as you get into the workforce, you will see that everything is being, the technology is, is moving in every dimension of business, right? Everybody needs to have a laptop or a desktop or things to do their computing skills with. So imagine things where, where life, a magazine subscription, that's what changes your life, right? Where technology becomes a subscription where everything becomes a service. You don't no longer need to own everything on your laptop. How many times have you had situations where you did a report on your laptop and then you forgot to take that in a pen drive? Let's say you have a file, you saved it, you worked on it brilliantly, and then when you went to school or when you came to class, you had to print it and you forgot to print it, bring it in your pen drive. What would you have done? You would have to probably go back or redo the whole thing. But now, what has happened with the cloud? You can save things anywhere. Most of the times we email ourselves, right? And then we save it, and then we say, okay, I can access my email, I don't need a pen drive. Now what technology is doing is saying that don't just apply things to computing. It's not only about saving your information, it's not only about calculating, it's about making lives better. How can technology help a farmer? How can technology help a doctor? How many of you have gone to a doctor and have still seen him take notes on a piece of paper and file that? Is that a very uh, sophisticated way of keeping people's record? Forget the violation that happens if you don't keep it in a private way, but I'm saying that's what's changing in the world. Everything is going to be parked somewhere with enough encryption that you have access to that information at any given time. If I asked any one of you that if you took your parents to the doctor, what was the last time, what was their test results, how many of you would remember? You probably wouldn't even remember when you went, but imagine if that data was available on your phone. Imagine if that data for those of you who have parents or children 
or, 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 or the faculty, you have family members. Imagine having data at your fingertips. What does that do to lives? It makes you, it empowers you. It gives you have information at your tips. Another example of what technology is doing, and I'll put into an example, is if those of you who have traveled, have you seen gates, flight gates changing in the middle or when you're just trying to go from gate one to gate two? The flight gates change. You know what's happening? What's behind that is big data analysis. So a lot of information is being stored in a computer somewhere. But that information now has the ability to give you um, informed decision-making skills. So if a plane lands on gate one, and 50% of the passengers are connecting to a flight which is taking off from gate 50, which is at the middle of the terminal, this analysis will say, you have 50 passengers connecting, get them to a gate closer because you have 20 minutes to board. This is what the power of computing is doing. It is going to, you may not see it right now, but by the time you move into your next phase of life, you will see that everything will be technology driven. If you see the example of Bcash, it's a very interesting example. By the way, it's funded, one of the funding uh, investment uh, arms of Bcash is the Gates Foundation. Um, so Gates, Mr. Bill Gates has said two things to me. One is that he watches, he and Satya Nadella, our CEO, are watching 10 countries in the world. And guess what one of the 10 countries is? It's our country, Bangladesh. You know why? We've got people. We've got 160 million people. That's a critical mass. You cannot ignore that. We're sleeping giant when it comes to technology that is waking, just waiting to wake up. What is required that when, when, when you have the infrastructure of technology, but what is required from people to take us to that level? It's people in the room, people like you. And I'm talking to women as well. So I'll give you one example before I begin why we and you have a role to play to meet where technology is flying at 40,000 feet. You need to take off and go up and meet. Um, so women in the room can relate to this. I was married right after my high school, intermediate, because you know, in, in those days, the parents thought that there is a, a marriageable age, you get good candidates. It was an arranged marriage, I didn't know my husband, right? So um, it's, uh, then I went to Silicon Valley right after I got married and I, I started studying. Now, there was a pressure on, from my mother that don't get too old, have your child. There was a pressure from, from my husband that you must finish your education because I come from both sides of my family are very, uh, they all have master's degrees. My parents do, my in-laws did. So that was pressure and I decided that it's really interesting to be working. I'm in Silicon Valley, which is the heart of technology. I had just finished two years of my bachelor's degree and I was very excited about, about the corporate world and I wanted to work. So I, I applied for a job and, and it, it, it wasn't easy, but I actually found a job. It was not a very interesting job. It was just entering data into the computer and then having that information, the bills in the computer. So there was, obviously my mother was not happy because I'm not focusing on having a child. My, my husband was like, You're, if you study, how can you work? And um, I wanted to work. So. You know, in my graduation, my parents came. You know when you do the walk? I don't know how many of you have done that. It was very easy to spot me because I have two degrees, a Bachelor of Science degree and MBA, and I was carrying two children at both of my degree times. Because I said, I will work, I will study, and I will also have a child. There is actually no limit to what we can do. It's all in the ability to make that choice that I can do it. And nowadays, Women are very empowered because guess what technology allows you to do? Technology is saying any place, anywhere, anytime. Do you really need to leave your home to be working to these days? No. If you're an entrepreneur, you can do anything from home. In Microsoft, the first thing we tell our people that we are not a garments house, we don't clock your hours. You are available wherever you are. Do your work from wherever you are. And in the new technology age, we say if you, are, if you are happy being at home and you can be productive, don't come to work. You don't really need to show your face and do your hours if you cannot do productive work. So now let's move a little bit. We've, I've told you a little bit of the experiences of how is technology the new frontier? Is there, is, can we make it a bit interactive, Omar Bhai? So can, can I get a little bit of the audience, what do you understand by the new frontier and then we, we make it more meaningful? Any brave soul or would you like me to pick on you? <laughs> a 
I remember being on that side. I know how it feels. Anyone? Pick on someone. You know, I, I'd love to pick on women. How about you? Do you like, what does the new frontier mean to you? Yes, you. Microphone. The new frontier. When we talk about technology and the new frontier, you don't have to be a computer science graduate or an electrical engineer to actually start a business in technology. Technology is an enabler. So if few of you women decided to do a business on your own, even with fashion design, you could do it now. I'm going to come back to you and say two, two things. From Microsoft, we encourage youth, that means students, to start businesses. If a few of you got together and said, we want to start a business because we have this simple idea, we will give you all our software valued at $150,000 for free. But you have to be a student. And if you graduate and you start a company, then we will still work with you for five years of your existence as a company and give you software for everything we make will be free for you. Because we want to empower every individual and every organization on the planet to do more. Yes, madam. What does the new frontier mean to you? <laughs> the new um, technology and the new frontier. What is the new frontier? Anybody else? We have volunteer, the gentleman in red. Yes, I'll come to you as soon as. Uh, madam, in my opinion, I think the new frontier is the next big thing that's going to show up in development, which is going to change our development in the society. Change the world, how we view things. Like right now, it's um, VR, virtual reality, which is going on. That's what I think is about, about new frontier. Good answer. How about you? So you agree with what he's saying? Yes. How many of you have heard about augmented reality? Anybody here who has heard about augmented? So you know we're moving from virtual to augmented, but can I challenge your minds a little bit and say the new frontier is only about being inclusive. It is about including everyone on the planet to come join the technology right. Because can you leverage technology if you don't use it personally? Um, I'll give you another small example. It's a very simple example, but I like to share it with everyone. Those of uh, you, want, you are much younger than me, but my parents are getting older and they don't like to go out. So my mom, especially, she doesn't like to go out a lot. And I, and then you know what happens is your grandparents probably will see that they 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 stay home. They're depressed. Uh, they don't feel well. Things just go downhill. So I got my mom a laptop when I was working in Dell. She loves to play Scrabble. I taught her online Scrabble. She has Facebook, YouTube, Viber, whatever. You know, now when I go to visit her, she says, let me finish this game and then I'll talk to her. That's, that's a, she found a companion, she found a therapist, and she found a doctor. But she doesn't complain now, but she's so busy. On WhatsApp, I have to hide myself. I cannot, because she says, you were online, why didn't you take my call? So, you know what's, what's how, that this is giving her power. Another example I'll give to you, and then I'll say why it's a new frontier. Everybody knows you have helpers at home. Two of the little girls I have at home, they have Facebook, Viber, WhatsApp, whatever you call it. Two interesting stories. The Wi-Fi provider called me and said, I'll say it in Bangladesh, you understand? They have suddenly gotten power, right? They have now understood that if I don't have good data, I cannot do what I want to do. And you know what they did? One of their moms called and said, um, what the, one of the family members got bit by a snake. What would have happened if they didn't know what to do? They would be crying, say, oh, please let me go home. She said, I'm, uh, let me do a Google Onushondhan in Bangla. She found out when a snake bites you, what do you do? Is that power? Is that the new frontier? That's inclusiveness. That's saying technology is not for people who are studying in universities and who are literate. Technology can be given to anyone. Bangladesh, we have a population of 160 million people, 120 million phone subscribers. Yes, we are still depending on voice, but data is slowly kicking in, right? What does data enable you to do? It enables you to process things that you never had processed before. It gives you power at your fingertips. Any questions? 
Yes. Hello. Uh, I just had an idea of, after um, listening to you. I would like to share a story, a sim story. So I went to the doctor like yesterday. So I had an operation for a checkup. So I, came, I went to the doctor for a checkup. So he asked me to do an extra report. So okay, I, I, I was like, okay. Then he asked me to come again and get the extra report. Why, why didn't he, like, I was worried, like, why didn't he use that technology and gave me that extra report on my phone, on my database, and he doesn't even remember me after my operation. He doesn't have any data, he doesn't like, right. who are you? I have to show all the files and right. everything, and he remembered me there. So like, when I visited India and other places, the doctors would literally give them reports on, I'm, I'm heart is beating very fast, I'm sorry. Uh, they would give me reports and on everything on my, uh, on internet, on my phone, and everything. But in Bangladesh, they don't, we don't have like, we have the technology, but we don't apply that technology in our livelihood. For instance, that doctor could easily give me those reports and suggest me things on check up on me through my mails and everything, but we do not have that. So why don't we incorporate a software something for like uh, hospitals like LabAid and other hospitals so that they can give us information? So my question is to you. Yes. You have Microsoft on your side. You yes. have identified a problem. The best businesses are solving a very simple problem. Healthcare needs to be leveraging technology. It has not. What if I told you, get four of your friends together and start a company? And you don't need to be a software programmer to start something, right? Because nowadays, what do we have? We had the world of software. Now it's being actually built apps. It's on your phone. It's very easy to build apps. We as Microsoft give free apps training to any student anywhere who wants to learn that. Because we want to encourage people to get on the platform. What would stop you, if I was your personal mentor, to get five people together and start this app where you could save your personal records and then get more people in it? That's a question. Uh, we will help you. Well, I We need people to be thinking like entrepreneurs. Well, I think I need to need more time to think about it and hopefully. <laughs> What but was I, I, about? Yeah, There's no but, investment. No, no investment. It's just time. That's it's just all. time. Yeah. Yes. I need to have, and we know. are going to be, you will be backed by Microsoft. Yes, true. I would love that. I would love that. But first, uh, first of all, I have to, this is just an idea. No, but you know, if you wake up in the morning, <laughs> the, I'm just saying, if you wake up in the morning, everyone in the room, I am sure each of us can list 10 problems we face in our lives. Can we? Yes. Of course. Solve one. Leverage technology you have a business plan, and come to Microsoft. We will support you all the way, but because your success is our business. But there are always problems for students like us to go over that place, to get, uh, to go over people, to get connected to people like you, so that we can leverage your I'm plan. I'm here, your university is inviting me, I'm here. Yeah, thank you for I that. I will give you my email, because you know what, my, from my agenda from Microsoft now is to get Microsoft brand ambassadors nationwide. Do you know that we have trained, we have 500 brand ambassadors right now, and each of you, if you're, you are welcome to join, I will give you the details, come to Microsoft Office once a week. We are teaching people what is happening in the world of technology. And the first message we give is it is about inclusiveness. It is about taking everyone with you on that journey. And, and it is also not difficult. So the women in the room, how many of you think technology is very difficult and you would never do a business related to technology? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You may sit down. Yeah. Okay. Any women in the room? Do you think technology? Yes? Hello. The thing that I'm hearing from you again and again that uh, we are trying to save our time and empower ourselves. But the thing that I've seen nowadays is that people are wasting huge amount of time just to get connected with the technology. But is it ever possible to empower ourselves without even investing that amount of time and in a very fast way? So, you know, there's nothing, nothing is going to be easy. There are no shortcuts in life. You will have to invest the time it requires to get you to a certain level of understanding and a certain level of expertise. I did it, you will do it, the people, the, the next generation will do it. But it's about choosing your time wisely. It's, it's, you don't need to learn programming 
to own a software company. The message I'm trying to give today with technology in the new frontier is anybody, anybody in this room right now today could be a technology a technology company entrepreneur. And, and the idea that I'm trying to share today is technology is not about software engineers and electrical engineers. It's, a technology is an enabler. It cuts through any vertical of business. So just can you give me a more specific example of what what you what did you mean by investing time in learning what? For example, the example that you gave a while ago, like about the pen drive. Uh, what I have seen that nowadays people tend to share files um, through social networking sites in, uh, instead of doing all those things. So in a way, we are also like investing a lot of time, which is not even needed here. So is there any way like we can equip? in order to save our time and do our work in a more effective way. So I'm not really here to talk about our products, but there's one product that I will mention to you. It's called O365, which is Office 365. It comes with one drive. It is like one gigabyte of storage on your phone or any device you can get into. So you don't really need to leverage social media. The problem with Facebook is you can check in, but it's very hard to check out, right? You just kind of get trapped, and that's where a lot of your time is going. So you don't need to do that. There are other ways of leveraging sharing file and, and um, making yourself more productive. So at the end of the day, we all make a choice. Thank you. Any others? Yes. Oh, I thought, did, was there a question? Yeah, he wanted to. Uh, I'm from Busy School. I'm, uh, I want to tell that uh, eBay has paid their own payment system like PayPal, and Apple has a payment system, Apple Pay. Does Microsoft have any plan to do their own payment method? Not that I know of, not yet. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Would it make a difference to you if we did? Uh, no, actually, it's a, I was wondering that. It's a very big corporation, so they should have. Uh, enter into this business, I think. That you see, you know, if, yeah, good point. I will let Satya and the kids know. <laughs> this is advice, but definitely you, you, they might be into it. But you know, every everything is not for everyone, right? Yes. Every, all of us cannot be doing everything, and that is how many of you in this room want to be entrepreneurs? I'm looking for some females. Hands. I see two who have already spoken. Yes, you. What entrepreneur would you like to be? Both of you. You rose your hands, right? So the, let me begin with women and then I'll come to the men. What kind of entrepreneur would you like to be? Yeah. Hi, um, basically, I want to have my um, own business. I want to have a cafe and where I want to work myself. I want to be there. And, and also, in letter, I want to be um, work. I want to work like, like you, like for empowering other women also. Okay, very good. How about you? Hello, ma. But as she said, I want to have my own business and work on it and like can manage everything by my own so that people cannot, so that women cannot be on the top. And, like the way you are the MD of Microsoft, really. Like you're an inspiration, like that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> but um, so anybody here who, who disagrees and says, no, it's important to do the corporate route and not do work for yourself? I have a certain view I'll share with you why I think it's important to first learn and then jump. Because we, as you've said, the rules are changing daily. So it's important, in my opinion, I, you, you may disagree with me, but it's very important to learn the rules a little bit and figure out how you're going to manage and then you jump. Um, one of the gentlemen, you wanted to be an entrepreneur. Can I ask, what did you want to do? I have a cafe, and it is, I know, this is not in Dhaka, so I just, in, I, I have seen in India, you know, sorry, 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 ma'am. It's okay. Uh, I know that uh, in India, you build a uh, building national, like, sorry, ma'am, I'm exhausted. 
Oh, you don't want to ask your question? Okay, okay. It's an honor to have you here speaking in our university. I mean, I just went to, I just went to your um, official Facebook page at Marketing Office and I asked them, I also contacted them through, through Facebook. I also mailed Microsoft. I mean, the question was basically, Microsoft provides student partnership program. Microsoft brand ambassador for students. But we don't have it in IUB, we still have it, but why can't we have it anymore? Can we please get it soon? So that we can also participate in it and be an ambassador for Microsoft. Would you like to start that yeah, project? I would like to start that I made <laughs> So you will be recruited our first brand ambassador and then another female. We, 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 I'll work with Sabina. I just came from their office. They gave me a prize because I went to a comp contest and they said they don't know it, have any idea about it. They told me they're going to contact me later. But they haven't contacted me ever. So um, I, I, will, I, will, I will work and, and make sure with every university we want to have yeah. two representatives and the more that join. So MSP is the Microsoft Student Partner Network where you get to learn everything what is happening in the world of technology. And if you decide to start a business, which I was, the, my goal for today's session was when I walk away, I have at least one group of students, four or five of you, who, if I can do that in every university, that is the new frontier. Every university has one startup community, Youth Spark, which is, that means you're not, you're not graduated yet, you are still a student, you are going to leverage technology to do a business. And I love the idea of cafe, but I'm, I'm going to push you a bit more and say, think of some things like health, education, and fintech, three verticals that the world is now trying to speed up. The whole world does not have these three verticals leveraging technology as much as it should. So we are, as Bangladesh, we are at ground zero with everyone. The race, we're all at the same beginning line. No one is ahead of us. And I've worked 15 years in Silicon Valley. I think people of Bangladesh are very, very, very enterprising, very intelligent. We just need to believe in ourselves. We need to push ourselves. And we should not be scared of technology. Technology is not a giant that we cannot handle. We, we have the ability to change the world. You know how? Through technology. But because we're such a big population, if we do something right, others will leverage, others will replicate. That is where technology is right now. So I really would encourage a group of you to think of something. We've talked about health. That's a very easy, quick thing to do. And I would encourage the Dean of the School of Business, the Pro Vice Chancellor, and the um, Chairman to say, I, from Microsoft, you will get full support. We have a, a competition coming up in April. It's called Imagine Cup. We take the winners all the way to meet Satya and Bill Gates. They will fund you. We will mentor you because I want Bangladesh to be on the map of Microsoft. And we, everybody is looking at our country. This is the time. This is, we are at a major inflection point. Nobody knows who will win the race. And everybody is at the start line because of technology. Nothing else. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your field of study is. You could be studying English language and you could be, have a business that leverages technology and still show the world how to do it right. So thank you very much. If there are no questions, we will um, end the session. Thank you, Ms. Kavir. Um, could I please request the Chairman Board of Trustees, Mr. Rashid Choudhury, to come on stage? The Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor M. Omar Rahman, the Dean School of Business, Dr. Saruddin Ahmed, and of course, Ms. Sonia Bashikavi, once again on stage. Please, thank you. Respected guests, we have now come to the end of today's seminar, and I would like to invite Dr. Samuel Parvez Ahmed to come and present the Board of Thanks. Thank you.
Honorable Trustees, colleagues, students, and guests, it's my privilege to conduct the vote of thanks for this occasion. I, on behalf of IOB, would like to thank all the participants for gracing this occasion. A huge thank you to Ms. Sonia Pashin for being Managing Director of Microsoft Bangladesh for such an inspirational and insightful talk. I'm sure that the students will immensely benefit from her knowledge. I would also like to thank Mr. Rashid Chaudhary, Chairman Board of Trustees, for his contribution and constant support. Furthermore, we are grateful to Professor A. Omar Rahman, Vice Chancellor IOB, for throwing light on today's topic and sharing his comments with all of us. I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to the Olga Organizers of today's seminars and all guests and participants who have taken out their valuable time to be here with us today. Thank you all, and for everyone, there will be a light refreshment. Like